It's Friday night, and it's time for the Char Lottery. Let's go right over to the lady with those all-important balls, Miss Charlotte Church. Thank you, and welcome to my once-in-a-lifetime end-of-series Easter special Char Lottery. <laughs> yes, one of you lucky people in the audience here tonight will be leaving with this amazing prize. <laughs> Has everyone got a ticket? Let's release the balls. This week's machine is Ruth Maddock, and we're using a set of balls we nicked from a snooker hall in Bethnal Green. And it is number 11! We've got to win the lockdown! believe it. You've won a state-of-the-art 46-inch LCD pal -seekum flat screen TV with a 1300 to 1 contrast ratio. Is it HD ready? Yes, it is. <laughs> I tell you what, that'll look great over your fireplace at home in Colchester, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> Darrell, right? Yeah. Yes, Daryl, oh. I happen to know a lot about you. Mm. And if you think you're having that telly after what I've just found out about you, you've got another thing coming to <laughs> Because you love practical jokes, don't you? Mm. Jokes that you think are funny. You yeah. have, in fact, spoiled not one, not two, but three of your friends' weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Look me in my eye. You complete nutter bastard. Yeah. Tonight... It's payback time. Because look who's here. Yeah. It's the three women you want. First up is Debbie, the beautiful bride whose wedding day was ruined when someone told the groom's mates that she was actually called Diane. Who was that, Joker? Daryl? Don't know. <laughs> Next to her is Wanda, who thought she'd won millions on the lottery when the wedding DJ read out her numbers. And so she spent the rest of the night celebrating and buying champagne for all of her friends. <laughs> but were they hers, Daryl? No. And finally, <laughs> Tracy. She and her groom, Danny, your best friend, were kneeling at the altar on the most important day of their lives. But what were all the congregation looking at? This. <laughs> Help me, written on the soles of his shoes. <laughs> Who wrote that, Daryl? No idea. No idea. Well, I am very well informed that it was you. Oh. Are you ashamed? No. It's despicable. <laughs> you should be. But today is all about righting wrongs. And to do that, we must go back to your very own wedding day. Here you are with the true love of your life. Not your wife Terry, but your beloved vintage Lambretta that you spent two years doing up. You love that scooter, don't you? Yeah. How much do you love it? Uh, a lot. On a scale of one to ten? Eleven. And where is it tonight? At my shop. I'm afraid it's not at your shop, Daryl. <laughs> it's here, dangling 100 feet over the Thames. And look who's got his hand on the crane controls. Yes, it's your best friend, Danny. The man whose wedding shoes you so kindly customised. Not so cocky now, Daryl. How about that for a practical <laughs> joke? But I'm going to give you a chance to make up for your crimes and save your scooter. Once we start the crane, you have 30 seconds to find the key hidden somewhere in this cake before it hits the water. Get the key out and the scooter's safe. The only catch is... You can only use your mouth. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Stand up. Start the crane. There it goes, Daryl, heading towards a watery grave. <laughs> Away you go, eat the cake! Come on, it's in there somewhere! Find it, Daryl, come on, you can do it!
congratulations, Daryl. You've managed to save your scooter, and you've also won a weekend away for your friends at the Calcott Manor in Gloucestershire. And I'll tell you, you can even have the telly. Are you happy with that? That'd be fucking great. <laughs> I tell you what, it's just like Tiswas all over again. Yeah.